Hello, I'm Maury. And I'm Sue. In this video, we're going to talk about why we wear an Apple Watch. We're both 77 years old, and we've been wearing our Apple Watches for the past four years. We want to give you our 10 most important reasons we think senior citizens would want to wear an Apple Watch. So let's get started. In this first section, we want to talk about fall detection. And we put it first because it's probably the most important of the 10 reasons we think senior citizens might want to wear an Apple Watch. If I take a hard fall, my Apple Watch is going to detect that. And if I lie there and don't move or do anything for about 30 seconds, my Apple Watch is going to call 911 and tell them that I have fallen and it will send my current location, the actual longitude and latitude of where I'm at. Then my watch will call my wife because I've set Sue up as my emergency contact and it will tell Sue that I have fallen and it will send Sue my longitude and my latitude so she knows exactly where I'm at. I live, of course, with my wife, but my neighbor on one side of my house is an elderly widow who lives alone. The neighbor on the other side of me is an elderly widow who lives alone. The neighbor right across the street from me is an elderly widow who lives alone, and the neighbor next to her is an elderly widow who lives alone. If any one of those four ladies should take a serious fall at home, I would hope that they would have an Apple Watch on their wrist so that somebody will be alerted. True story, we had a neighbor about a year ago who fell in her garage one night. She lay in her garage for an hour and a half screaming before anyone finally heard her. So we think an Apple Watch is a tremendous safety tool for senior citizens to be wearing, especially for those who live alone. My Apple Watch has a cell phone in it. I can receive calls and I can make calls on my watch anytime and anywhere. I can be at the beach, I can be at the tennis court. Sometimes I lose Maury in a store and I'll give him a call to find out where he is. So let me show you how I make a call to Maury. Hey Siri. Call Maury Reese. Calling Reese Maury. I can tell it's Maury because I see his name on my ID. Hi, Maury. Just making a little demo call. All right, I'm going to hang up and then I'll call you right back. Okay, bye-bye. So I'll wait for the call from Maury. Now I'll show you how I receive a call from Maury. I can tell it's him because his name pops up on my screen. Hello? Hello, it's me. Yes, Maury. I'm going to hang up now. Okay, bye. Bye bye. And it's as simple as that. Sue and I like to use our Apple Watches to record our physical activities. Sue likes to play tennis every day, and I go for a 50-minute bike ride every morning. And we use our Apple Watches to document and record our physical activities as Sue is playing tennis and as I'm riding my bike. Once we're done, our Apple Watches send all of the data about our physical activities into our iPhones where it's collected and documented and stored and saved. 
So let me show you what our Apple Watches are recording as I'm out there riding my bike every morning. Here's the screen of my watch at the end of my ride. It's told me I rode 50 minutes. I went 8.8 .8 miles at 10.6 miles an hour. I burned 210 calories, a total of 293 calories altogether. My heartbeat was 91 beats per minute and it got up to 105. I went up 20 feet. The date was September 10th from 736 to 826. The weather was 75 and the humidity 89%. Here's what it looks like when it transfers into my iPhone. Once again, it tells, tells me the total time, the total distance, the total calories burned, and my average heart rate was 87 beats, and I averaged 10 miles an hour. And then it plots my heart rate for the entire duration of the bike ride. Picking it up, here's my heart rate, an average of 87. Then it tells me once again the weather, the temperature, the humidity, and it draws a map, and I'll show that to you in just a moment. Furthermore, it breaks down my entire trip mile by mile and tells me how many miles per hour I averaged. So as you see, I was averaging a little over 10 miles an hour except the last three miles, and I slowed down to 9.4, 0.5, and 0.7. It also measures my heart Two minutes after I stop, this is called the heart rate recovery. Very important medically to know what that is. I mentioned that it drew a map. So here is a map showing me everywhere I went in my gated community during my ride this morning, all 8.2 miles. In this next section, I want to talk about texting. In my family, texting is our main form of communication. It's the way we talk to our daughter in St. Louis and our son in Illinois and our son in Indianapolis. It's the primary way we communicate with our granddaughter who's at college. We find texting is the way these younger people want to communicate with us today rather than email. The great thing about it is my watch is always on my wrist. So no matter what I'm doing or where I'm at, if any of our children send us a text message, I get it instantly and I can reply to it instantly. Let me show you how I send a text. And I use my voice with the built-in assistant called Siri. And it works like this. Siri, send a text to Sue. I'm on my way home and I'll be there in 15 minutes. Okay, I'll send this. And I've taken a picture of my screen so you can see what it looks like. Okay. Now I want to show you how I can send an audio text to Sue. Let's suppose that Sue is driving in her car and is going to be behind the wheel for the next hour or so. And I want to send her a text message, but I don't want her staring at her watch while she's driving 60 miles an hour down the interstate. So I will send her an audio text message. And here's the way I do that. Send Sue an audio text message. Hi, hon, I know you're in the car right now, but would you stop by the grocery store and pick up a gallon of milk on your way home? Bye, see you soon. Okay, I'll send this. And it's sent. And in a minute or so, Sue will get that audio text. So I've sent an audio text message to Sue. Let's listen to what that message sounds like on Sue's watch. Hi, hon. I 
I know you're in the car right now, but would you stop by the grocery store and pick up a gallon of milk on your way home? Bye. See you soon. Okay, so that's text messaging. As I say, it is the primary way we communicate with our children and our grandchildren. And we do it on our watch. The next major use of our Apple Watch I want to talk about is weather. Sue and I live in extreme southwest Florida. I don't know if you know it, but Florida is the lightning capital of America. We have more lightning strikes than any other state in the Union. So keeping track of the weather and knowing when lightning is coming is something that's pretty important when you live in Florida. So I rely upon my Apple Watch to send me alerts anytime a storm is coming or if there is lightning in the area, I get alerts on my watch telling me that. I also can look at my watch at any time and get a forecast of what's going to be happening where I live. And by the way, I can also look at the weather anywhere in the United States. So I also keep track of the weather in St. Louis and Illinois and Indianapolis, where our three children live. Here's the home screen of my watch, and right in the middle, I see the local forecast for my hometown, telling me it will be a low of 75 and a high of 88, and showing me hour by hour what the weather is going to be where I live. If I touch that with my finger, the display changes to this, starting with the current hour, which happens to be at 11 o'clock, and showing me hour by hour what the sun and the cloud is going to look like here in my hometown. If I touch it once more, it converts to percent of rain. Today happens to be a day with no rain, but if there were rain possibilities, they would show up. Touching it, I can also call up the weather somewhere else. For example, my daughter lives in Missouri, and here is her local weather hour by hour. And here is the temperature range in her hometown of St. Louis. So I can call up any city in the United States. Here on my watch once again, I see the weekly forecast showing me the temperature range each day and the probability of precipitation. So weather is something I look at several times a day on my watch. My watch measures and charts my heart rate constantly throughout the day while I'm wearing it. I can set alerts for heart rates that are too fast or too slow. I decide what heart rate I want those alerts to go off at. Last summer, while Maury was playing golf on a very hot July afternoon, his watch began vibrating on his arm and the watch screen showed a heart rate of 150 beats per minute. He was suffering from the onset of heat exhaustion. The watch alerted him again and the number had risen. He immediately took the golf cart to the clubhouse so that he could cool down and this might have saved him a trip to the hospital. I love the timer on my watch and I use it all the time. In the kitchen, there's times when I need multiple timers. The microwave and the oven may already be in use, so I use my watch. Other times, when I need to leave the house at a certain time, I set my watch timer to remind me when it's time to leave. That way I can go ahead with another task and not be so close to the clock. Let me show you how easily Siri can set the timer for me. Hey Siri, set the timer for 27 minutes.
In this section, I want to talk about the calculator. There are, in fact, dozens of calculators that you can load into your Apple Watch. I want to show you how I use Siri to do the calculations for me. What is 45% of 95? The answer is 42.75. Okay, and I'll show you that. Okay, next, calculate 24 plus 36 plus 59. The answer is 119. And I'll show you what my screen shows me. What is 27 times 310? The answer is 8,370. And I'll show you my screen. Okay, three friends and I go out to a restaurant and we decide we're going to split the bill. And we have decided we're going to leave an 18% tip. So let me show you my screen. What I would do is I would call up the calculator. I will punch in the amount of $389. Then I will dial in what percent tip we want to leave. And then finally on the screen, I will tell it how many ways do I want that split. In this case, split four ways. So let me show you what my screen looks like to calculate an 18% tip on a bill split amongst four guys. And that's my calculator on my Apple Watch. In this section of the video, I want to talk about the calendar, which is something I use practically every day. For example, let's say I want to make an appointment with my doctor. I would do it like this. Set an appointment with Dr. Prickett next Thursday at 2 p.m. And I've taken a picture of my Apple Watch, which I'll show you now. Or I could ask my watch, what are my appointments for the next five days? Here's what's on your calendar in the next five days. I'll take a screenshot of this and I'll show it to you. Or I could set an alarm to wake me up in the morning, like this. Set an alarm for 6 a.m. tomorrow. Your 6 a.m. alarm is already on. Oh. And I took a picture of my watch and I'll show it to you. Or let's say I want to play tennis every Friday afternoon from now through the rest of the summer. I would set up an appointment like this. Make an appointment to play tennis every Friday at 2 p.m. Here's your recurring event starting tomorrow. And I took a snapshot of my screen. I to... scheduled your recurring event starting tomorrow from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Thank you very much. I took a screenshot of that and I'll show it to you now. So I really use Siri to make appointments or to check on appointments or to ask Siri when my next appointment is. I love the fact that my calendar is on my wrist at all times and no matter where I may be, if I need to schedule something, uh, I am just a touch away from doing it. And thanks to Siri, I never have to type anything. Love my calendar. I can send and receive email on my Apple Watch. Let me show you how we do that. 
we can send and receive email on our Apple Watches. Whenever I receive a new email on my watch, my watch vibrates and I hear a musical tone which I set up. I can tell my watch to show me all of my unread emails. My emails may contain pictures and I can see them on my watch face. I can immediately write a reply to any email or send a reply all to a group of people. I can compose and send a new email to anyone. I can use Siri to add a contact, add the subject line, and I can dictate my email using my voice with Siri. When replying to an email, I can send one of a dozen canned messages with a simple touch of my finger. I can also send an emoji in an email. I can use my finger to draw my email message. Having email on my Apple Watch means I'm always available to receive an important email. Our family and our friends know we are always available by email.